Hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Piglet here once again, and I'm Sylvester here, we're back for the Muxy Toys, as you guys should probably already notice at this point. And welcome back to more as play of Sonic Unleashed for the Nintendo Wii for slash PlayStation 2. So last time we actually did manage to done all three of these uh, remaining acts in Shimon Night, and then uh, we actually mentioned that out right now, that the four facts on Shimon Night that we haven't sort of mentioned this last uh, word from, um, from that, um, that was actually called, um, Altar of Oblivion, just want to let you guys know that. So even then, uh, we didn't actually say that during that, the proper name, but anyway. So today for this video is that we're about to be hitting to Annabad, and right off the bat though, I'm pretty sure that it will actually take you to Annabad Night straight away, so... Yeah, that's all there is to it, with, um, with that being said. However, though, as we mentioned earlier, that there's no um, Empire City in this version, including the um, some of these stages in Missouri. So even then, Missouri only has an on um, the boss act. So, but even then, though, that um, you know, the HD version of the Sonic Unleashed game that it only contains like um, Empire City. So. At least it excludes, uh, and, and also it includes the, um, the DLC packs, but you gotta have to download the diamonds for sold separately, so, you know. But anyway, enough about that, so let's go ahead and talk to some top townspeople. Somehow, it almost kind of reminds us, like, a cardboard box, or a cardboard cutout. But, still, it's not that impressive to look at, but still. Anyway, um... Yeah, as far as Annabelle is concerned, the, uh, the represents the country of this place, I don't know, it's kind of a difficult situation for us to say about this really, just because I haven't looked up on the, um, some other countries' routes for a little while, although the only time we actually did know is Brazil, because of the Rio 2016 will be on its way, for the Olympic Games-wise, so, um, you speaking of that, today was actually the 1st of August today, so we only got about 4 days left until the actual, um, Rio 2016 Olympics is about to start, so... Yeah, now we actually access to a secret shrine right here. So we actually get into the Gaia Gate of Annabad. So just the 6th continent. And somehow, that if we actually approach into the Annabad um, um, Gaia Temple, or the Gaia Gate, uh, we actually got ourselves water to walk on. And as you can tell, all these portals have been now been accessed to, so that you can actually teleport into one Gaia gate to another. So that's quite clever. However, I really, really um impressed of the water textures in this version on uh, this Gaia gate, more, more so than the PS2 version in my eyes, just because the PS2 version's graphics do kind of reminds me like a Nintendo 64's um, graphic on um, during the water textures and all that. But still. Can't really complain too much. Alright, so here we go, on to Annabad Night Act 1, known as Starry Night. And this level is actually known as, as far as the actual, um, and during the daytime stage is concerned, we'll be about to be hit into later on, is known as Jungle Joyride. So, Annabad, as far as, uh, level, does, uh, as far as the level difficulty is concerned, it's not as hard as it used to be. The only time it makes it incredibly difficult is when we actually get into the next act, but we'll explain more on that until we actually get into that. But for now though, we're just gonna have to place that heavy metal crate box in to access to that door, because with that blue switch, you can't necessarily press it at, the, at a time, but you have to use that metal crate in order to access the door. So righty though, so... I guess there's no much else we can just speak about, besides the, um, we only got about, um, four days to go until when the actual Rio 2016 Olympics was about to be gone for opening ceremony, so that, you know, we'll be pretty excited about this, actually. So, um, yeah, pretty excited. And sure enough, though, that in addition to that, that we also managed to point out that we're pretty much almost done with this playthrough already, like... Even though we breeze in for those um, uh, um video um time length as far as I'm concerned. It's such a breeze. Yeah, I know, right? Because we usually just um like back in the day when me and Buzz Lightyear just always constantly just uploading some videos really, really shortly. Similar to how it does in the um, the crappy movies like um Max's Toys had a day off to the movie as far as I'm concerned. But even then, uh, it is like a poorly rushed job. So anyway, uh, we can't go for here because the invisible walls is blocking us. 
So we're going to have to do this the normal fashion way. And I'm pretty sure, kind of think about it, that um, this level might actually be quite the shortest of the bunch, just because we'll actually get into just a little bit of a second. But even then, though, that even though we still got a whole lot of things to do from this part and onwards, oh gosh, we almost died right there, because even though, no, if we somehow died, then we might actually kind of have to, like... Well, another thing is worth knowing for that in terms of difficulty, that uh, the only difficult axe I found, it was um, the second that we're about to be hit into later, as well as the fourth axe we'll be going to also later, because much like Shimon Knight, that it contains four axes, if I remember rightly, so... Yeah. And I believe, kind of think about it, that um, the fourth um, Gaia Gate, which is essentially Annabeth um, Gaia Gate, that this might actually be the final um, Gaia Gate we can actually explore on, because after that um, Annabeth has been fully restored, including the other Shamar has been restored, that I think when we actually get into the final level of the game, I don't think there's a Gaia Gate in the final um, level, or in this case, the final um, destination we're about to be hit into, which I'm pretty sure, sure enough, you guys, that you probably guys should know what we talk about so anyway so now though we have to concentrate just beating up the um the crap and likes out of these enemies here before we actually proceed so as you can see now you can saw when um sonic the werehog uses his fist to actually just kept on doing that shaking um shaking attack or in this case just a bashing in the floor kind of technique I'm pretty sure this may actually be called it, um, Earthshaker, so that's how the attack works. It, it might be a bit difficult to pull it off because, um, unlike the ones in, um, although you can have a tutorial section with, um, the Earthshaker, so you can actually just get a lot of practice with that. But even then, though, in the 360 version, you can actually double check onto your combos list, whatever you wanted to, assuming if you pass the game, and then just. Um, you know, see what combos do you need to perform at. But in this version, no, uh, you can't have a, uh, you can't have an option on the on the pass menu. So you're gonna have to be sure to actually get into Apatos tutorial sections or tutorial sequence, which that always happens every time. So, including the ones in the on the PS2 version as well. So you know. I believe, after this little conveyor belt sequence, in addition to the snowing variations of these robots that we saw from Halaska, this might actually be the final part of the level, because I'm pretty sure that's how, the, how this level it, uh, actually looks like, so... Yeah, before we actually end things off, we just get some force points, so that we can actually get ourselves some more leveling up for Werehawk. And sure enough, that in addition to that, ANOTHER s rank. Jeez, so many s ranks all this time. Anyway, so we got, you know, some of these um, categories have been completed. Stage complete! Man, we like that little quote. But even then, though, it's just for a short premise of those other stuff. And we got a Unleashed level up, so that means our Unleashed bar is now filled up to level 4. And then the only, one, well, the only ones remaining is the health for level 4. Now, after level 4 of those um, three um, status, that we're pretty much going to be actually just, if we continuously collecting those, oh yeah. Here we go, on to the next act, act two. And again, we can't exactly know what this level's called because even then though, that we're just a bit too delayed for, um, just, you know, discussion on certain stuff. But anyway. So act two can be really, really tricky, and also is by far the most slowest level in a game, just in my opinion. Just because the ultimate premise of this level here is the fact that you have to constantly run onto those um, rafts. And then if you actually jump on one of those um, rafts, then you can actually proceed for a next um, raft platform. And then that's all you literally you're trying to do in this level. Unless if you be, be unless if you're really, really curious that, that if you want to get an S rank from, you might actually wait until you actually get into one hop, one platform to another, like a really, really long time. Like as you can see on this footage, as you can tell right now, that we're waiting round and round and round and round into that whirlpool over there, so that we can actually hop into a platform. So, however, if you do touch by a water, it's instant death. So just be very, very careful with water, especially that Sonic usually 
Michael's allergic to um, water, so you just don't want to actually drown yourself, especially noticeable when you actually come across into those really tight um, platforms like these. So anyway though, uh, before we actually do anything, let's double check what's in here, this is force points, and if we pull this lever up, uh, this will actually activate a hidden platform in the center, which contains like force points in here. However, if you can hear closely for the- if you hear it cl carefully with, um, the- on the cl clicking sound, I believe this might actually activate a time limit, so that if you actually, um, do not make it to that platform in time, and I'm pretty sure if the timer actually stops, I'm pretty sure that the platform itself will disappear. Although I may be wrong about that, because I haven't double-checked on backtracking a little bit, so we're just a bit too late for that situation. This might actually be quite tricky to hop into that platform over there. There we go. On the far left here, I think there was actually a hidden item in there, but I honestly think we weren't able to actually get there just because we just rather not just risk it. So, unless we actually grab that item, hidden item right over there, just hid inside these uh, bunch of pots. So, there you go then. So, um, yeah, before we actually um, notice something, oh, uh, we need to hop onto that platform right over there so that we don't actually fell into the water. Well, luckily though, that this um, version of the game that does contain some um, really easy, um, um, really easy place checkpoints. So, uh, well, than the ones in the HD version, you're gonna have to find a checkpoint gate until you actually um, just get onto when you die on certain points of the level. So, oh god, ah, dang it! That was kind of my fault right there. Anyway. So yeah, you get a checkpoint right there, so technically you get a sort of respawning point, so that's good news. And since we actually died just once on this level, so even then when we get into the next act, our life's um, trying to restock, so that's a good thing I suppose. Much like how it does it for any certain other acts from before. So before we actually proceed, let's grab this uh, force points right over here. So yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool to us. So now we can actually hop over to that enemy over there. And we can actually just hop in to get the heck out of this whirlpool situations. Because in the final bit, I think we can actually be perfectly safe from now on. Because I'm sure enough though, that we can actually come across into one of those enemy battles just like before. However, if you actually approach on to... Although first things first, let us grab ourselves some more force points. However, if you beat the, um, the, um, the, this bunch of rocks over there, and then this will actually lead us to this very, very hidden, um, um, area, which actually contains a bunch of rings, a hidden item box, and as well as the, um, the same enemy as we, are uh, the same big enemy as we fight from Shimon Knight, but even then, though, uh, that it was only, we only gonna fight him in the smallest, smallest arena as possible, so... Again, thanks to that beautiful techniques of that Unleashed meter, that we can actually beat the hell out of him with, with ease. Although, unfortunately though, our Unleashed meter starts to actually just comes a little bit, because I don't think you actually fight some enemies into that whirlpool right there, so, um, you know, that's kind of a little bit of an odd thing to notice by that. Oh yeah, there's one more enemy right there, so let us proceed to the final bit of the level, which is, I think we're gonna have to deal with more enemies. So... At least the, um, the mini boss um, theme is not too bad. Oh, here's one of the most annoying enemies of the entire game, in my opinion. You know these wizards that we actually saw from the form, mostly the fire variation in the Shamar um, Knight? Now we probably introduced into one of the most annoying variations of those wizards, which is called Plasma, or in this case, electric Electricity Wizards, which... Sure enough though, it'll actually try to temporarily try to stun you if they actually try to electrocute you. And overall, uh, the, these guys are pretty cheap as hell. Especially consist of, and also not to mention, they trying to teleport every single time whenever when we're trying to desperately want to attack them, as much as we just used to be. Which is probably true. But anyway though. Okay, so we already got about uh, one more enemy left, and sure enough, that'll be it for Act 2. I believe Act 2 in um, um, Anna Bad Night is actually called uh, Restless Coast Side, so yeah, that's how that how this level is actually called. Just wanted to let you guys know that. 
And sure enough, once again, we got yet another S rank. So we're doing a really, really good grand job for that little situation. So, uh, did we actually make our way to uh, the next status level? Uh, not just yet, though. But um, eventually, when we get some more um, skill points or even, hell, even um, force points, then we can actually pretty sure we can actually become fully stronger than it used to be. So, yeah. Now we move on to act number three, which was known as Deep Jungle. Hmm. I didn't notice there's a jungle around here in Inanaba. Well, the thing is, though, is because uh, we actually go and explore inside the jungle, which is really, really, really cool. Because it kind of reminds me of something related to the films, or specifically two Disney films that has been released. Which was The Jungle Book in 1967, including the live-action version as well. And also Tarzan as well, so that's kind of that's kind of cool in my eyes. Anyway, but except in Tarzan, it doesn't have it doesn't usually normally have um, some little parts for um, the um, the sea parts. But the only time it has houses, it was actually the tree house. So yeah, in case you probably notice if you're actually playing Kingdom Hearts on either the PS2 version or the um, the HD version of um, Kingdom Hearts Final Mix onto the PlayStation 3. You usually kind of think about it, a lot of um, Kingdom Hearts players out there wants to do a let's play on the Kingdom Hearts games. I think they only do it on the, um, the re, um, like, specifically the final, um, mix versions, just because it's definitely a definitive version of it. And plus, not to mention the HD versions of these games as well, just because... Well, thankfully though, we don't have to acquire the, um, the, um... A PSP capture device until you actually do the original version of Birth by Sleep, so you can actually just jump into Final Mix version on the PS3 instead, if you actually guys be curious to actually do that playthrough onto that PlayStation 3 with um, nice little clean HD um, textures and HD um, quality and all that. And, I, and I'm pretty sure that um, if we actually get ourselves um, Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 uh, Final Chapter Prologue, I don't think there's actually a way to get ourselves the um, the, um, the 3DS capture card for um, doing the Kingdom Hearts uh, Dream Drop Distance playthrough. Well, for some people anyway. But um, anyway though, but the only time that anyone is going to use their 3DS capture card for is doing some other Mario 3DS playthroughs and stuff like that. So unfortunately though, we still don't have one. Because what I've heard is still is pretty expensive though, as far as when I was noticed. And I believe it was also to see, at, at the same time that I think our currency to get that capture card, I think it was still dollars. So, oh wow, that was actually pretty close there. Yeah, which is kind of true, because, um, conveniently enough, though, that, um, although technically UK audience kind of trying to get the capture card in the UK as much as possible, but it's just the fact that it was still, um, it's still available in North America, so, and because of that, I saw one of the latest um, 3DSgames.com, or the latest 3DS Games YouTube channel, uh, although now, every now and then, they just call it um, Zero King 1 instead of um, Lotus 3DS game, because I don't know why, but um, anyway, so he managed to actually do, uh, he did manage to got himself the American version of the Nintendo 3DS purple version. I think it was actually called Midnight Purple, I think that's what that, uh, that color scheme was called. Anyway, if you push here, there's another, uh, yeah, another hidden item, which, even though it still is incredibly optional, so... Yeah, we seem to be walking onto those stalks right there, which is really, really cool. Kind of think about it, that it, again, it kind of reminds me of, like, the Jungle Book for some reason, because the settings and also the atmosphere as well. Like, you'd be walking onto that little, um, um stalks as platforms, so that's kind of cool. And if you stand on one of those, um, light blue, um, um, platforms, that will actually act out as falling platforms, or in this case, crumbling platforms, so you have to be very quick to get out of this, because if you somehow fell off and died, then, uh, you'll actually just go back to where you came from, and plus, not to mention, if you actually, um, died, though, that the, luckily, though, the platforms do respawn, though, so, unless it's, well, yeah. This one's not that bad, it's quite easy though for the most part, but some newbies out there seem to have a lot of trouble with this at first glance because 
There's going to be a lot of emphasis, like there's going to be a lot of bottomless, bottomless pits nowadays, so I think that's all there is to it for this battle. Yeah, that's it. Oh, it must be more than that. That was easy. Bit of a paycheck, but I gotta have to admit that. And still we get a yet another s ray Well, this axe has a serious short amount of um, rings that we need to collect, and also the force gem and the forces as well. That's kind of odd. Granted, because this level is actually really, really shorter by comparison to the um, the previous levels that we actually been into so far, but um, anyway. So now we move on to Axe number 4, which I believe this might actually be one of the hardest levels in the game in my opinion, just because um, the way the about this level is, oh yeah, this level is actually called Heavenly Ruins, which that's what this level is called. And then, uh, right off the bat, though, we actually got ourselves a, um, spikes to dodge. Well, actually, uh oh. Oh, god dang it. We died at the first glance. But yeah, this part is quite tricky because you're gonna have to dodge a lot of spikes in the spikes wall. And, um, this kind of reminds me of something related to that, um, some people might actually get rage quit on in the, in the day Sonic game on the Nintendo Wii. Which is called Sonic and the Secret Rings. You know that, um, the Night Palace stage when you go through, um, the beginning part when you're actually trying to go sidestep, um, sidestep wall and dodging the spike pillars and then just also get the heck away of the, um, these falling, falling platforms? Well, this sequence is very similar to Sonic and the Secret Rings' it's Night Palace, except there's no shower, thank god, because shower is so annoying. I know, right? But, um, anyway. Let's jump off here, there we go. And kind of think about it, that's, um... Another thing is worth knowing is what makes this level so difficult is the fact that we'll explain to you when we actually get all the way to the end of the level. And that was by far the most annoying part of this level where we actually go trying to get into, so... For now though, we have to activate the switch so that we'll let this platform try to actually take us to the other side of the level. So, that'll be the case anyway. It kind of reminds me like in um, the, um, the escalator, or hell, even the elevator or something like that, but um, just with um, just horizontal um, directions rather than just vertical movements. Unlike in the reality on elevators, especially Toy Story 2, so anyway. So we have this tough red titan right here once again, even though we already did fight him since um, Shumar 9. But even then, though, we only have to fight him just once, and look at that, our health is almost depleted, so... Hopefully, though, we should be able to grab some rings. In fact, speaking of such, let's grab some rings. In fact, yeah, let's go ahead and grab 30 rings so that, you know... Okay, so he's almost down right here. In fact, let's finish him off with this unleashed mode. Let's just say that much. There we go. And hooray, we actually done it. Well, except for the red wasp enemies, which we're gonna have to deal with. And sure enough, we can actually go ahead and continue and proceed. Here's the um, little um, four um, cross pathways, so that we can actually use this lever, or in this case, the switch. Oh, it's just invisible walls. Okay, nothing too major. Okay, so we need to use this little um. This this puller on um, all this liver um, wheel to actually just to traverse the um this little platform onto its different low different spots of the level. So that if you go onto the far right and whoa, I almost died there. If only if that um, that jump actually feels responsive occasionally. Unlike in the 360 version, it kind of like feels a bit too responsive. But anyway, though, I think it's basically because of the um, the jump delay and stuff like that, like I just did. But again, we only got about two lives left until when, uh, if we get game over on that particular level, we have to restart the whole level again, which won't be that good. Especially consists of that this game, it, it, again, the only, the only thing you need to get extra lives from from this version is to actually constantly get into these, um, Gaia gates, so that will actually work out. So the one we need to get into is the one on the middle, so that you can actually proceed to the level. So here's some enemies right here, speaking of such. So that we can actually jump onto the other side of the level. And then before we actually continue, we're just going to go ahead and just open one of those doors. One of them contains the force points. 
And uh, if we break those certain parts, that uh, gives you some another set of force points. There's another item right there. Which if you open that middle door right there, and then if you hit, um, open that door, another set of force points. And then if we post here, another battle to be just to be gone. So in addition to one of the most annoying wisps, or no, not wisps. I was kept on constantly thinking that Sonic Colors and Sonic Lost World for some reason. Oh, don't forget Sonic Generations, um, um, tropical uh, resort and um, planet wisp stages. But anyway though, so in addition to actually having ourselves the most annoying wizards and also annoying wasps enemies, this is going to be a tough fight. There we go. I'm sure enough that we actually did this for the first try with no deaths. I mean, we did get hit a little bit. Oh, we actually actually have some blue, two blue titans here. So, I'm guessing this part wasn't exactly over yet, though. Kind of think about it, that it always trying to force us to actually fight one of these bigger variations of those types of uh, dark guy enemies, which that'll be necessary true. But even though, though, these enemies are not that much of a fact in my opinion, just so that you just have to be very careful with his damage output, it gets even ridiculous. Especially when he constantly uses his own boom macro. So, there we go. Now, I think we can actually continue now. Okay, so let's proceed here. And then, um... If you, if you go on the left, I think that's where the end of the level is. But if you go on the right, um... In addition to actually having ourselves a little door, which I think actually contains something rewarding, if you go onto this, that side right over here, that you actually get ourselves a freebie item, so that's kind of cool. Kind of cool nonetheless. So let's go ahead and just get some even more force points. Seriously, we're getting a lot of these force points here, ladies and gentlemen. Still. But anyway. So in addition to when you grab, when you hop into the, uh, the right side of the level, in this case for that sequence, the enemy will actually just help you to actually get to the massive chunk of shortcut to actually skip the entire portion of it, so that's kind of handy. This is by far the most annoying part of this level for me, just because in addition to where the goal was actually right over there, and also you know these light blue platforms can actually act out as crumbling platforms, so that if you stand on one of those, uh, the platform will no longer to be reappeared. Now we're gonna have to actually deal with the, um, the crumbling platforms while dealing with uh, while dealing with those battle enemies. So this is by far the most toughest part of this level, just because you gotta have to do both things at a time. But luckily, though, you know the um, the strategy I did use earlier. I think this is the strategy I usually use because this might actually be the easiest method. Oh, dang it! Yeah, that's what I was talking about. That's well what Piglet just mentioned, and he already talks about that, so... Yori makes this section I found is really easy, is to constantly grab in those smaller enemies, and then just chuck it at the wizard, so that you can, uh, hopefully you won't able to actually deal with this with a, a really annoying, like, hard thing to deal with. But sometimes though, it can take a bit of a little, like, take really overstay as welcome, because here and now, this battle is just too long for my taste. But anyway, though, I believe you can only deal with these guys for likely three times. I'm pretty sure it's three times. Um, and considerably, that will probably is pretty much going to be true. However, if we do fall off of the main level, we're going to have to redo the whole level again, which, sure enough, though, that it will be really, really bad if when that was going to happen, especially if the on um, the jump on um, jump delay doesn't screw us over, especially when it did that a little bit early on in the game. But anyway, though. Alright, so these two is all almost down right now. Come on, we need to get that battle fame gone. We don't want we don't want to let you just re kept on reappearing for like expendable 30 minutes. That's overly short, and plus it's get really old. Anyway, there's a freebie item right there, and there we go, that's the end of the Act 4, Heavily Ruins, in Annabad Night. Very, very, very uh, difficult level, I might say, but at the same time, quite of a long level of side of things, so... And sure enough, though, we got ourselves four in a row in Annabad Night's s ranks. So how about that? Oh, in addition to that, we actually got some whole bunch of s ranks from the previous level, so anyway... 
Now we actually have ourselves our health upgrade up to level 4. So, um, yeah, that's pretty cool. So we got Secret Illusion, Secret Number, Secret Movie Number 16, and a piece of the key to actually access to the boss in Annabelle, but we're not doing that just yet, because next time on Let's Play Sonic Unleashed for the Nintendo Wii for slash PlayStation 2, now we're about to be heading back to Shimar and then talk to the professor to see what the next objectives we're about to be doing. I believe next up on our list, we'll probably be going back to Shimar so that I think we're hopefully going to restore that continent and fight the boss. So um, yeah, see you guys next time. Later, fellas. See you guys then.